Hello, this is a video on solving exponential equations. We're going to start off with uh, the first type, which is, that, and there are two types that we're going to talk about during this course uh, work. And the first type is that all the bases when the equation can be rewritten with the same base. Now, you're not actually making any of the bases bigger, or smaller, they're staying the same number, what we're doing is rewriting them. So like 81 can be written as 3 to the 4th or 9 squared. So just trying to figure out how to write it so that each piece can be the same base. If you can accomplish that, then you can use the method of solving, which is there's this property that says if a to the m equals a to the n, so bases match one on each side, then the exponents have to also be equal, so m equals n. If the bases within the equation cannot be rewritten with the same base, then the only method we have for solving is to use logarithms. So we'll show you that that gives us um, a good approximation of a decimal point that would be the exponent value we would need. So for this very first one, notice that we have a 2 base on each side, and there's just one base on each side, so this is ready to use the property. So we would set this as 1 minus x equals 2x plus 7. So in this case, we just want to solve for x, so we'll add the x over, so that would be 3x, subtract over the 7, so that would be negative 6 over here now, and then divide by 3. We should be able to check that this is the correct solution, so 2, 1 minus negative 2 equals 2, 2 to the uh, 2 times negative 2 plus 7, this would be 1 plus 2, so that's 2 to the 3rd, and this is negative 4 plus 7, which is also 2 to the 3rd, so notice it does work out. Now with exponential equations, it is not required that you check all of them, I mean you should always check answers, but because there's no domain restrictions with exponentials, we don't have to check the solutions. Um, for this next one, notice they don't have the same base currently, but 64 is 4 to the third power. So we can rewrite this as 4 to the 4x plus 1 equals, this will still have a 2x on the outside, and this could be rewritten as 4 to the third. It's still 64, it's just be rewritten as a base that matches with this one, and it multiplies out to that. So then when you have two powers on the same base, we use the multiplication property of exponents. So this is 4 to the 6x. Now they have the same base on each side, so we will set the 4x plus 1 equal to the 6x, subtract over the 4x and get 2x, divide by 2, and we get this time that x equals 1 half. And I'm not going to check all of these just because I said, remember, exponentials have no domain restrictions, so therefore we don't have to do a check on each one, as long as your arithmetic is sound. That's the only reason you would want to check, is if you want to check your arithmetic. Now this third one here is one of the more difficult ones that we see in our course. Um, notice that there's not just one base on each side, there's actually two on each side, and none of them are the same right now, but 9, 9, 81 is 9 squared, let's see if 729 is also related to 9. So if we do 9 times 9, that's 9 squared, times another 9, so this would be 9 to the third, that's 729. So we can write all of these in terms of 9. So we'll start with the first one here, and this would be still to the x power on the outside, and that's going to be a 9 squared. And then this next one, notice it's a 9, but it's in the bottom, so we want to bring that up. So if you bring a power up, or a, a base up, its power changes to a negative, so that'd be to the first already, so it's going to be to the negative 1 and then we still have the 2x minus 3 on the outside. 9 to the 4th doesn't need any changes, but this one will become 9 to the 3rd times the x that's already inside, and there's a negative 3 on the outside. Okay, so I'm actually going to draw a second little parenthesis around this guy right there. So the 729 turned into the 9 to the third, but there was already an x inside, and then there's this negative 3 on the outside. So let's work through this. This uh, is, again, multiplication property for the powers, so this is 9 to the 2x. Um, this would be distributive, so that will be 9 to the negative 2x plus 3 equals 9 to the fourth. Now here I'm going to work out this inside part first, so this would be 9 to the 3x 
and then we'll need to do another round where we work out the multiplication of those two. So 9 to the 2x times 9 to the negative 2x plus 3 equals 9 to the 4th times 9 to the now 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x. Okay, so at this point we are like, yay, all of the bases are 9, but that's not enough. To use the property, we have to have just one base on each side. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the property that says if you do x squared times x to the third, you add the exponents. So we're using that rule that says if you're multiplying the bases, you're adding the exponents if they had the same base. So this is going to become 9 to the 2x plus negative 2x plus 3 equals 9 to the 4 plus negative 9x. Now we have same base on each side, so we can drop uh, the bases and set the powers equal. So this would be 2x minus 2x plus 3 equals 4 minus 9x. The 2x's actually cancel out because they're opposite signs. So this is 3 equals 4 minus 9x. Subtract over the 4 and get negative 1. And divide by negative 9, and we're going to get positive 1 9. Okay, so this is probably the most difficult one you could see where we have the same base already. Okay, so now we're going to spend a little bit of our time talking about what if you cannot manipulate the bases to be the same. So this is method two. The inverse of an exponential is a logarithm. And what we know about logarithms and inverses in general is that the x's and y's have been swapped, the domain and range essentially. So if we're trying to write something in log form that was already an exponential, we have to know how to transfer that. So we have this um, definition of going from, I'm just going to say it's the definition of a log because that's what it is, but it'll show you how you convert this. So if you have 3 to the x equals 7, that would be log, and then there's three blanks, a base, an argument, and the answer to a log is the exponent. So the base is always the one that's connected to this exponent here. So this is going to be 3. This is x. And then the argument becomes 7. So that's the definition of a log. That's how we could solve this particular problem solving that. But then we would have to know change of base. Change of base is because our calculator does not do base 3. It does base 10 and it does base e. So there's another method. Instead of just trying to convert it using the definition of a log, because that may not be all, always the best way. What if they both had exponents? Then it's a little confusing. What would you do there? Another method, and actually the more um, useful method for all the cases, is to do what's called taking a log of both sides. And that property looks like this. If x equals y, then log base b of x should equal log base b of y. Um, as long as x and y have to both be greater than 0 because with logarithms we cannot have something negative as our argument or even equal to 0. We have to have a domain restriction. Logs have a domain restriction of 0 to infinity. So we have to make sure that that's true. So looking at this one, we're going to try this method of taking the log of both sides. So if we take the log of 3 to the x equal to the log of 7, then we can use properties of logs, which is another video that you can watch, to know that if you have a power on an argument, you can bring it to the front. So this would be then x log of 3 equals log of 7. That's why this is so powerful, because an exponent that's a variable can then be brought to the front and is no longer an exponent, so now we can solve for it. So we would divide both sides by the log of 3. So this is what's called the exact answer, where it's not been divided yet. So it's just the uh, log over the log written like that. If we want to get an approximation for that decimal, because obviously you're kind of thinking, well, what do you raise 3 to to get close to 7? Um, and I know it's less than 2 because 3 squared is 9, so we're hoping to get a decimal less than 2. So this would be log of 7 divided by log of 3, and we get 1.77 if we round to two decimal places. That's our approximation.
So depending on which one answer they ask for, and uh, we usually ask for both in some format or another, this would be the exact and this would be the approximation. Now let's talk about, okay, so that was a very basic one. There was just two bases on each side and only one of them had an exponent. The more complicated the problems get, we sometimes have to do some other steps besides just doing the log of both sides. You can't always do that right away. If you're wanting to take a log of both sides, you have to have the part that has the exponent isolated all by itself. So notice this 5 to the x is what I'm really trying to solve the x for. I need to get that x out of the exponent. But to do that, I need to be able to have this 5x all by itself. So the first steps are going to be to subtract over the 1 makes this 24 and then divide both sides by 4. You cannot multiply 4 and 5 and make 20. That is not true because first of all this has an exponent on it so it's not just a 5. So this is going to be 5 to the x equals 6. Now we would expect this to be a pretty small answer because 5 to the first power is 5, 5 squared is 25. So it's going to be a very small decimal. But let's take the log of both sides to finish this off. So now this looks just like example 4. So log of 5x equals log of 6, and then we bring the x to the front. So this is x log of 5 equals log of 6, and then we can divide and solve for the x. So that's log of 6 over log of 5. And then that would be my exact, and if I wanted to do the approximation, I would have to type it in on my calculator. So log of 6 divided by log of 5 is, oop, hang on, let me do that again, make sure I got it right. Log of 6 divided by log of 5, it's 1.11. So there's my approximate, there's my exact. Notice that before, I'm going to go back to example 4 for just a second. Do you notice that when I did the definition of the log, I got log base 3 of 7? Change of base allows you to change any um, log formula into what a base that you can evaluate on your calculator, which should either be base 10 or base E, the natural log. So if you do change of base, you take the argument of the original, and that becomes your argument on the top, divided by the argument, uh, the, excuse me, the, um, the base of this log becomes the argument of the bottom. And our new base here is base 10, because notice I didn't write a base at all. And that's exactly what we got when we solved by taking the log of both sides. So I just wanted to point out that those are actually the same answer. Okay, our final example is a little bit different um, because this time it has exponents on both sides. So you're not really um, solving for just one thing. You're solving, you're trying to get both of these exponents out of the exponent part. You're trying to use the properties of logs to get everything out of the exponents. So we're going to take a log of both sides. So this would be log 6x minus 3 equals log 8 to the 2x. We're going to bring the powers to the front, so this x minus 3 is going to come to the front, and so is this 2x. Now when I bring a binomial to the front, I put it in a parenthesis because it is going to be distributed to this log base, or this log 6, because remember this is a base 10. And then this side will be 2x log of 8. So we're going to distribute this, this will be x log 6 minus 3 log 6. Don't let that fool you that it's a 16. It's a 6 in a parentheses. And then 2x log 8 on the other side. Okay, both of the parts that have the x need to be on the same side together so that we can solve for x. So we're going to move those two over. Uh, one of them's already over here, so I'm going to leave it here. And I'm going to subtract over the 2x log 8. Anything that doesn't have an x, we want to move to the other side. So this negative 3 log 6, I'm going to add over. Now what I like to do at this point, because I do see my x here, is I'm going to pull it out as a GCF to the front. So it's coming out to the front. What that leaves me with is a log 6 minus a 2 log 8 equals a 3 log 6. Now, of course, I would divide uh, this parentheses over to get the x by itself, but I like to clean this up a little bit first. If I have a number in front of one of my logs, I'm going to put it back up as a power. 
So both of these are going to get cleaned up by being put back up to the top. So this is x parentheses log 6 minus log of 8 squared. 8 squared is 64 equals log of 3 to, or excuse me, 6 to the third power is 216. And then there's one more thing I'm going to clean up. Because I have two logs here separated by subtraction, using our property of logs, we can make that a division problem of the arguments with one log. So this would be log, and then it's always the first argument over the second argument. And I will reduce that down in just a second, but that's what it looks like. So let's move this up here. Um, so 6 over 64, they're both divisible by 2. So that would be 3 over 32. And then now that I'm pretty happy with one log on each side and they're cleaned up as nicely as I can, I go ahead and divide it. So this is log of 216 divided by log of 3 over 32. And I leave it like that. That's my exact form. Now if I needed the approximation, which sometimes will give you the option of doing just exact, sometimes we'll ask for both. So 216 log divided by, I'm going to put this in parentheses, 3 divided by 32 and then log equals negative 2.27. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helps you understand a little bit more about the different versions of solving exponential equations. When is it necessary to use a log? Um, and when is it necessary not to? So hopefully this was very helpful for you guys as you're studying for your final exams.